about the um, concept of a historic aviation campus, and it's on the county airport, and our county council member, Brian Sullivan, is here, so we thought we would welcome him up to say a couple words. Well, thank you, off. and, and um, I'm just going to be very, very brief. Unfortunately, it looks like uh, the presenter tonight, John Sessions, the operator and CEO of Historic Flight, is unable to make it, so we'll probably have to beg for forgiveness and ask you to reschedule. Um, at, at a later meeting, unless you just walked here. No. It was here. Oh, there you are. Oh. Oh, so Kevin and Brian were in the that? front row, worried. We were texting you. <laughs> okay. He's here. He was stealthy. Well, thanks for coming, John. Appreciate it. <laughs> well, that's great. Then let me reset. I'm sorry. I apologize. <laughs> So obviously I'm on the Somish County Council, as everybody well knows that the airport is an operation uh, and operated by, by Snohomish County. And um, uh, John has a project that he's proposed. He came to me, I don't know, a year or so ago with the idea of uh, creating a very unique situation, something very similar that was in England. And uh, this, is, this is a unique proposal that he'll get into the details on that creates a, basically an historic campus where the Museum of Flight and the Paul Allen Collection, the historic flight, and other aviation enthusiasts uh, that love aviation history and restoration and education related to aviation can come and, um, and participate. And uh, the operation um, in England, John, uh, refresh my mind now, that's Duckworth? Duckford, thank you. I always want to say Duckworth for some reason. Duckford is a very popular tourist uh, destination as well and attracts 250,000 to 500,000 people a year. So we have a very similar uh, opportunity here. You know, John wants to uh, invest uh, many millions of dollars. The county wants to participate and maybe allow them to build a campus, with, you know, with a dollar lease. And um, uh, I think it's coming together quite nicely. We have the motion in the proposal. Uh, coming out of the county executive's office should be up to the county council by next week uh, for a review by committee and then on for a vote by the county council. So we're very, very excited about it and the possibility of, uh, of attracting visitors. I'd probably leave you, before I introduce John, leave you with the idea that this is prime real estate um, and a prime project. Uh, the only other use that's probably available for it might be uh, an expanded terminal. So I'll just leave that with you <laughs> as a thought. Right. <laughs> so, so it's my pleasure. John, why don't you come on up? And uh, this is John Sessions. Um, John is, uh, is a wonderful, wonderful advocate for aviation, but also for the surrounding community. He often hosts fundraisers for our many charities around here. And uh, it's always an honor and a privilege, you know, to, to visit his facility. He's a great player and a great friend, so it's my, my honor to introduce John Thank you. Sessions. You bet. I'm glad you're here. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor and Council. I had a flashback there to my first reading of Tom Sawyer, <laughs> witnessing my own funeral <laughs> from the belfry of a church. But here I am. see them. Down arrow. Thank you. Yeah. The Historic Flight Foundation, as many of you know because I recognize you from visiting, is a 501c3 educational foundation uh, dedicated to the period 1927 to 1957. 27 being the year of the Lindbergh Crossing and 57 being the first year in which the same crossing was made in pressurized jets with upholstered chairs, food cooked on board for people in tailored clothing. Uh, some of us believe that air travel has been deteriorating ever since. In any event, it was a miraculous 30-year period, and when you talk about wood and rag biplanes at the end of the Barnstormer era, and then the Boeing 707, as the book ends to that period, it uh, sort of brings to mind just how much happened. So we focus on that period and our outreach is to students, to patrons interested in history, people interested in engineering, 
and we host events, as Brian mentioned. Um, we recently became a public charity, which means it's less a private foundation. It's more a public activity. That's a status uh, accorded uh, by virtue of a more organic capital base, which is a, a great relief to me because it means that two-thirds of the income comes from other sources. And uh, we uh, had a toast on that day. Um, we're looking to do something larger than our organization, though, through the Historic Aviation Campus, and that is provide a venue to which we can attract like-minded institutions, not only from our own airport, but from around the world. And you do that, in my view, by setting aside a destination that is special and having terms of engagement that are attractive and then making the presentation to the potential participants. The vision is five institutions that would all be part of the same visitor experience and that you would be allowed to go door to door to door to door. And uh, one institution might be um, specializing in restoration of a particular area of aviation or era of aviation. And another might be a demonstration uh, facility where aircraft are test flown. A third might be something such as the Museum of Flight Restoration Center, which initially on the east side occupied space that wasn't built for it, has outgrown it, has made the best of it, and is ready for something more appropriate to the tasks of that great institution. So we're looking to set aside about 14.4 acres, or about 1.5% of the area of the airport. Before you in this short PowerPoint presentation is a depiction of what the five facilities along Kilo 6 taxiway might be with one at the end across from the current Historic Flight Foundation facility. This architect's uh, rendition uh, takes away some of the imagination. Uh, you'll notice that one of the buildings along the row there is a bit uh, different in uh, architectural character. We did that simply to indicate that the participating institutions would likely have a a central center, a place from which transportation could be launched, not only uh, within the campus but to other attractions on the airport, uh, also community rooms for meetings, and a common um, library. Museums duplicate space, you know, empty rooms everywhere. And we are trying through this approach to uh, uh, maximize the utility of the real estate. The, uh, the bottom left-hand side, the two buildings are the two that exist today. Built those in 2008 and 9. This is just an eye candy piece uh, of the architecture of the period. And the idea is that we would integrate this architecture, uh, these styles, into the designs of the various buildings, that there would be a variety of styles, but that they would be from uh, the golden age of aviation and perhaps the decade following. This is an aerial depiction of the real estate uh, showing one of our festivals uh, this was a vintage aircraft weekend festival a couple of years ago. And as Brian said, it really is a special piece of real estate to have Mount Rainier on one end, and Mount Baker on the other, to have jets of all sizes and planes of all sizes rotating for takeoff and landing uh, right in front of you uh, is the kind of real estate, particularly at the airport that uh, Boeing favors with the manufacture of its largest airplanes, is the kind of place that will be attractive to museums from around the world, including the Air and Space Museum. Uh, most of these world-class museums um, only are able to display about uh, often less than 10% of their holdings. And the reason is uh, space and venues like this. Um, it's 8% for the Air and Space Museum, the rest being lodged primarily in warehouses in Maryland and Virginia. And, uh, 
recently the uh, Ubar Hazy uh, Dulles Airport facility uh, addressed some of that, but uh, uh, it really is the case that there's 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 wonderful display opportunities from these world class institutions, and uh, bringing them here would be essentially a branch office, a North American presence. The issues we've had to address, the County Council gave us the opportunity to study this uh, proposal. We did so at length and with the best professionals we could find. We had to make sure that the real property, the deed restrictions from the FAA and the U.S. Army Air Corps did not preclude what we intend to do. They do not. We had to then study the law applying to the FAA, the Federal Aviation Regulations, and its grant-making authority. Painfield, as you probably know, has received uh, many millions of grants over the years, and we did not want to run afoul of that uh, cash flow, uh, as it's so important to even the most basic of capital assets at the airport, like runways. And uh, indeed, we have no basis for uh, fearing that anything we're doing is anything but permitted by the FAA. Uh, historical museums are by law an aeronautical use. And uh, the goal of the FAA is to make each airport sustainable. So one might ask, well, what happens if you give 14.4 acres to a good idea with a public development authority running it? and only charge a dollar a year for that. Well, the goal of sustainability is a goal. It is achieved by pain field better than most airports, and it is not achieved by any major airport in the United States. <laughs> so on the bar graph, we're uh, real close to the top, uh, but LaGuardia, Dulles, Kennedy, O'Hare, they all strive for sustainability and none of them achieve it. So we're, uh, we're bullish that we can make this into a very positive thing, both in terms of uh, county and pain field relations with the FAA. The legal structure, as I mentioned, is proposed as a PDA, but not as a PDA to raise money. The idea is that the authority, the board that ran the real estate would be taken from the public with uh, appointees from the county and the county executive, the county council, uh, the airport management, and the public at large. Uh, the fundraising would be uh, primarily through uh, foundation and uh, state and federal grants and the philanthropy of the participating institutions. Uh, the actual buildings would be built by the institutions, but following design criteria established by the board. The infrastructure, we hope to raise the money uh, to do that uh, through private, uh, state, and federal resources. That would be to extend Bernie Weber Drive, to bring in the utilities, to build the pads before the uh, participating museums can be constructed. The, um, we expect that each of the five structures will require 12 to $15 million of investment, so a great, uh, great boon to the area. The uh, recruitment strategy is to make the rounds internationally once we have an approved uh, ordinance of the county council. Um, most people downtown in that building get it, that you have to have the term sheet before you ask people to participate in something of this uh, magnitude. And uh, a dollar a year lease for real estate that hasn't been occupied very often since World War II, uh, it's still important. I mean, it is real estate that theoretically could be used for something else at some point and raise for the airport $325,000 a year. We don't take that lightly, but we also emphasize its importance in the outreach effort to say to the board of the Museum of the Royal Air Force, the county is in. You have to be able to say that. And finally, an exit strategy. If all this uh, thinking should not uh, lead to a uh, viable project within two years, 
we want to make sure that everything we've done improves the airport for some other use. Uh, we'd like your support. We met with the mayor and we have a uh, draft of a letter we'd like you to consider. Be happy to answer questions. Great. Council questions? Council Member Lord? Sure. Uh, again, uh, I tend to be uh, a little different about it where I, I thoroughly support this because uh, um, I'm an engineer. In, at Boeing, and we, we have this love of airplanes, and uh, I also live in Mukilteo, and then I, our whole council is uh, supportive of aerospace industry kind of jobs and support that industry. And so this feels to me like an outstanding use that's a win for you guys, it's a win for the county, and it's a win for Mukilteo, because it, it puts the kind of uh, uh, usage for that airport what we'd like it to be, which is uh, developing and supporting and encouraging the aerospace industry. And then it might very well turn on some young kids early on so they can figure out to turn that into their career. I would rather see that. And then, and then plus the fact that you have all of these wonderful places that are in one place. Personally, having it scattered around the airport make, makes it kind of difficult for me. But if you said, by gosh, this is where it's all at, then you really can turn that into a day. And I believe that will make it more of a destination by combining it all. So I just think this is a wonderful idea. And then uh, I, I support it. Thank you. Just to... Um Clarify, we're not, um, we're not certain of the migratory tendencies of all of our paint field partners. <laughs> we have uh, received a formal letter of interest from the Museum of Flight as to the Restoration Center. We don't expect the future of flight to move from its current location. And uh, we have had discussions with Flying Heritage Collection and, and certainly um, they have so much on their list of uh, ambitious undertakings that there's probably enough room for them on. Uh, it probably requires two sides of the airport, but we'll see. Uh, so there will be at least the opportunity to bring one of the partners to the same spot together with. I, I have no commitments in my hip pocket. I don't drop names, but you will be pleased. Yeah, and what I think the one thing I wanted to say is I think it also sends a message to the rest of the county and the region that uh, Mukilteo isn't a NIMBY place. It's just that we, we support aerospace so strongly. I think, you know, people live here, they love it, and they support it. But for us, it's the science and the engineering and the development and the history of the planes that is really what drives us, and I believe that's an important point. So I think it's a way to show that the city of Mukilteo isn't, a, you know, not my backyard place, but we actually love what you guys are doing on the west side there. That's, that's, that seems to support both sides. Thank you. Uh, Council President Champion. Well, John, thank you for your presentation. Um, I did have the opportunity to listen to you speak, go oh, about a year ago at the Painfield community meetings where you gave a little bit more in-depth presentation of your vision, um, but we're struggling with some financing options at the time so I'm happy to hear that you've kind of gone with a public charity found a path to work that out I think you have a wonderful vision um, and I thoroughly support a full restoration project that really can show well people of all ages for that period of time what it took to maintain and update and um, basically produce aircraft and keep them up and flying so I think that's all great um, an interest that I do have for the area that you're located in um, goes to a what we call a park and ride plus. So there's going to maybe be a park and ride, and then there would be hopefully a big parking garage there. Have people talked to you about that, or are you aware of that? And does that impact your planning in any way, shape, or form? Airport Director Wagner uh, brought that to my attention a couple of years ago and that uh, the land below Kilo 7, mm -hmm. which is where we're located, uh, might be used in that way in the future. That is currently occupied by the Hoffman Construction Company as Correct. general contractors to Boeing. Right. And, uh, you know, when they were studying the land north of this site for the triple X, or triple seven X uh, possibility, and there were a thousand parking spaces planned. I mean, 
it just means that near the top of our list we have to consider how we deal with cars whether it's through some kind of collaboration with something that's going in nearby or whether we have to build something like that ourselves okay and it's there's so far there's room for everybody well and those cars will bring people to visit your museum and um, our greatest demand is on the weekend well, I think that will all work out okay thank you very much you're welcome Councilmember Wheeler. John, thank you very much. Actually, I couldn't say anything other, you know, better than what they've said so far, but I do have a, uh, one question in, in regards to time frame. I know how you've been working on this for four or five years now. Mm, some days it seems like that, but actually the, the resolution to set aside the, um, the land for six months so that we could study it was approved in December of 2013. And uh, we presented our report to the executive uh, and informally to members of the council uh, within that six month period. Um, you know, timing is everything. Yes, and yes. Uh, between the landslide and a change in county executive and a couple other things, um, you've got to decide when to call the question. And we're doing that now. Everything is going forward on this. Uh, how long are you anticipating this to take to build out what you're looking at building out? It won't be the Alcan Highway built in six months. <laughs> uh, but we, uh, we will have pace, uh, I would say, uh, 9 to 12 months to organize, plan, and engineer. Uh, six months to build infrastructure and uh, then we'll launch on the build out of the facilities over the succeeding uh, as many as four years okay so five and a half year yeah rough build out well you know if we if we have a blue chip list of see once you get into each of these museums they'll have their own often ponderous procedure for something like this and Right. There'll be some that are faster than others. But uh, I would say we should have a commitment to the portfolio participants within two years. Wonderful. Well, thank you very much, John. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you for your presentation. You're welcome. It looks like there aren't any other questions from council. So thank you for, um, for sharing this with council. I'd just like to acknowledge we have many volunteers here tonight who yes. happen to be residents and have an interest in this is uh, a way for them to keep current too. That's Thank great. you very much. Thank you so much, yeah.